Hello, it's Rebecca. And before I start, I would like to apologise if you hear any extra noises throughout this video today. Next door, I don't know what they're getting up to, but they are hammering away and it's really quite annoying. So I'm sorry if you hear banging and whacking and hitting and other DIY type noises, but that's them next door. Anyway, so today is another book review day and this is my 11th book that I have been reading for the 2016 Book a Shelf Reading Challenge. I will leave some links down below in the description box to explain what the challenge is about, but basically it's to read 26 books over a year with each book coming from a different category and each category is alphabetized. So the book that I have been reading comes from the category of I, a book with an industrial theme. And this kind of encapsulated the steampunk genre. So I have been reading Leviathan by Scott Westerfield. So I will read you the blurb and then talk to you about the book. Two opposing forces on the brink of war. The clankers who put their faith in machinery and the Darwinists who have begun evolving living creatures into tools. Prince Alexander, the would-be heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, comes from a family of clankers and travels the country in a walker, a heavily fortified tank on legs. Darren Sharp, a girl disguised as a boy, works for the British Empire, crewing an airship made of living animals, the ultimate flying machine. Now, as Alec runs from his own people and Darren crash lands in enemy territory, their lives are about to collide. So this is the first steampunk book I've ever read and I think it will be the last. I really couldn't get on with this. It just didn't feel right to me. It just, I don't know, I can't really pinpoint it. It's a strange genre where it's set in the past but also in the future at the same time and my head kind of can't really cope with that. So it starts off with Prince Alexander and his family have been killed and he's the last heir to the throne but because of that people want to kill him. And this is the start of the First World War, way back in 1914. But the technology used is certainly futuristic. So Alec belongs to the Clankers and they have machines that you climb inside and you drive and they are huge, they're like giants and you can crush people in your wake and you can shoot people and it's all very machine orientated. So after a couple of chapters we then meet Darren and she wants to join this Air Force thing. I do apologise, things didn't sit in my head with this because I wasn't really enjoying it and I didn't understand so I do apologise if I get things a bit wrong or a bit muddled but it, it, it took me a while to process and I still, I'm not too sure what was going on. Anyway, so she wants to join this Air Force thing, but she can't because she's a girl. So she dresses as a boy, she's known as Dylan, and she has to take a test ride on a giant creature. She's a Darwinist. She favours the evolution and creation of strange new creatures to help with fighting and war and all that kind of stuff. And it, what it seems like is a giant kind of jellyfish type thing that's, that can fly and float and it's got tentacles and bits and things and it seems a bit kind of weird and icky and I don't know and she's taken this thing for a test drive or a test fly and as she goes up she sees a storm in the distance and she wants to prove herself as a good airman I don't know the technical terms and she doesn't want to come down earlier 
than she has to but she gets caught up in this storm and the jellyfish type creature it's not a jellyfish but that's what it kind of looked like in my head ends up getting kind of sucked across the ocean and she ends up in mainland Europe from London and while she's trying to get herself back to England Alec and his household of servants and various people are trying to save themselves and escape what could be a huge war and they end up having to work together two really opposing sides machinery versus I'd say nature but the animals that they have really aren't natural and it's about working together and dealing with the horrible things that are happening and yeah like I say I do apologize I just I couldn't get into it and when I was looking for a steampunk book this is the one that kept coming up in lists you know top 10 steampunk and all that kind of stuff and all, on all different websites and I was hoping I'd enjoy it but my mind just doesn't I'm not a big fan of reading war books anyway whether or not they're based on reality or if they're extremely fictionalized and yeah I I tried and this took me a very long time to read and the characters were a bit strange and I couldn't really get into it so I'm sure if, if you are a steampunk fan you've probably read this and you probably really enjoyed it but I'm sorry I I can't I can't recommend it on my own personal taste but if that's the kind of thing you're interested in then give it a go it's it's quite an easy read um there is a second book and it did leave it on a bit of a cliffhanger but I I won't be reading it it doesn't doesn't bother me either way so yeah not much more I can say about this so I am sorry with this one I did try but yeah really really can't say much more so if you'd like to hear any of my other book reviews then please subscribe to my channel I put new videos out every time I've read a book and do anything else related to books or writing or anything like that so if you're interested in those kinds of things then please subscribe and I will see you soon have a good day bye bye